evening. Uh, this uh, is the June 22nd meeting of the University of Glen Homeowners Advisory Council. It is called to order. It is 6 07. Um, we'll begin with public comments. Um, please limit yourself to three minutes. We've got a very full agenda tonight, and I see we've got a, a good showing of people, and I'm glad to see you all here. So, uh, first public comment, Toby Wheeler. Tonight, I'd like to speak about homeowners and their rights to be heard. I'm going to read you a correspondence. I do not. their partner, spouse, children, friends, or neighbors to any further duress. The names have been removed from this, and in each instance, the person's name has been replaced with homeowner. This conversation starts out between Sandy Boyd and John Lazarus. Sandy Boyd's comment to John Lazarus was, your conversation with homeowner only opens the hack to more chaos. The questions homeowner asked you have been answered for the homeowner in the same way multiple times over the years. Homeowner decided to fight the rules proposal because homeowner didn't understand that homeowner was already subject to most of what homeowner was objected to. Under the privilege, I'm sorry, under the provisions of the homeowner's ground suburbs, in the parking and traffic policies, homeowners sign to get homeowners parking passes. Homeowner is one of the people who believes his ground sublease is different than the reference document on the site authority web pages. I invited homeowners to work finance questions, which if I remember correctly, involved asking the homeowner to do a simple project Compare homeowner's ground sublease to the reference document on the web page. Homeowner was unwilling to do the work. Homeowner's goal is disruption that produces gridlock. Homeowner is a bully. Speaking to John, your polite conversation does not acknowledge the homeowner's bad past behavior in the community and the yelling and cursing experienced by staff and volunteers last year. Speaking to John, if you bring your homeowner's manual to the hack in a public meeting, based on homeowner's past behavior, I would predict that homeowner will attempt to disrupt any rational discussion. Homeowner is not a reasonably concerned neighbor who is willing to do constructive work. You're landing this on the lap of our divided HAC only invites more chaos. The agenda is sent for <clears throat> the agenda is set for this month's meeting unless homeowner works with Toby to add these questions. If that doesn't happen, this will move to the December meeting, which I am scheduled to chair. I would like to have a conversation with you, you being John. Mary and Jake on how we can handle homeowners' behavior. I'm sorry, Mr. Wheeler, your time is up. You can submit the letter into the record if you like. You're going to stop me? Yes, I'm going to stop you. I, I said before we started, we had a full agenda tonight. We know that we have always given three minutes for public comment. Your time is up. You may submit the writing in the record. Much so next up, Steve S. If you want to surrender your time, you can yield your time. Thank you, Mr. Satku. I would like a conversation with you, Mary and Jake, on how we handle homeowners' behavior at that meeting should what I expect occur. Disruptive behavior should be unacceptable, and I believe the homeowner should be asked to leave. Because we are simply a volunteer advisory committee, we're not even obligated to have public comments. 
Our goal of openness, especially to new ideas, works only if our neighbors share our constructive goals. Jake is following the site authority meeting model, which I think with one exception, you must attend the meeting in person in order to make a comment. Omar is free to come and make any public comment he wants. We should be free to invite homeowner to leave should homeowner become disruptive. Thank you for engaging in this conversation with me. The last few pages I'll just summarize too. John was not open to participating in this conversation. He was not willing to work which is very admirable because this is a bunch of nonsense that a homeowner would come to speak for this body and you would try to silence him. In January, I made a statement that many of you heard. I said that I have never been a part of a bully list. I have never had any knowledge of a bully list and that I would never participate in one. And the comment, bully, 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 keeps coming up in reference to something called the Three Amigos. And this is how this all started. I was asked if I was a Three Amigo, and I said, I don't know what you're talking about. But the Three Amigos, apparently their goal was to rip the village of bullies. I hope that by just saying that months ago, people would get the hint and stop their behavior, but they did not. And following along here, which I will give all of these uh, to be included in the minutes. I just read you Sandy versus one unnamed homeowner. I also have another hack member criticizing another homeowner as a bully with a comment, I think we need to publish a bully list. Then we go to a third hack number who recently said, speaking to a homeowner, not your socks off homeowner. What I don't want is 25 emails a day watching you Hector, site authority and UGCAM staff. Hector, for those of you who don't know, is to talk to someone in a bullying way. I don't think we make any progress sitting at this table if we're not opening. Time's up. If we're not open to listening Time is to the up. register. Turn off the tape. You don't have that right. I do have that right. I am the chair. This meeting, you were offered three minutes. Mr. Svetku offered you additional three minutes. I let you have the additional three minutes. Furthermore, this is not speaking as a homeowner. This is personal attacks on members of EHAC. That is not the purpose of public comments. Your time is up. The hack charter doesn't give you this authority. The hack we'll charter work on that. Thank you. Not please, please go silence. ahead. Continue to silence people. Continue to silence people. Not your silence. What's next? Okay. Um, okay, Mr. Manuel? I, I think Mr. Toby said enough time. Uh, he's just said he wanted to. Okay, he can speak. Ms. Campbell? Okay. This one to make sure we are on it. Whatever could be said just now, is it true that there is a bully list? Simple question. This is a question to the Bahak Ordinarily. Mr. Mandiam, this is not time set aside for dialogue. That's okay. I'm just However, saying. I'm just... However, I will answer your question. I'm unaware of a bully list. Mrs. Boyd, are you aware of a bully list? Mr. Bocard, no. are you aware of no. a bully list? No. Okay. So, all three of you are aware of a bully list. 
and none of the past members are going to be missed. I have no idea what a past member knows okay. or doesn't. That's all I need. Thank you. Okay. End of discussion. All right. Um, approval of minutes. Do I hear a motion on the minutes? I had an objection to the minutes. Okay. And I emailed it. I was a little bit late emailing it, but I was very clear about the comments. The, uh, the way the comments attributed to my public comments are drafted, they're um, misleading and confusing. So I want them redrafted. Uh, a point of order. Yeah. Public comments are generally not included in the minutes. And therefore, I believe that if you have included them, they should be struck from the minutes because we don't include comments of the community. Just because two members decided to use public comments last month, I don't believe they're in a reasonable part of our ongoing historical record. Um, so I will move that that be struck from the minutes. Well, I object to that. And I don't know what basis you're moving to strike those minutes. Do you have a statute or something that you, a basis for striking that? Our, our practice as an organization has been never to some synopsis of the of the public comments in the minutes, unless something has been going on, I've missed. Have we changed that previously? I'm, I don't know that that's true. And I've been here for two years. I don't agree that that's true. May I ask our minute drafter if that's true? We have, since I've been here, do you call it comment? <laughs> Then I am. Then I am. Then I am wrong. I am wrong, and I will stand down because practice has changed. So, so I will stand down because I am wrong. So I had a chance to read your comments. I have no objection to the changes. Yeah, you you said them. You'd like them to the minutes, the written minutes, to reflect what you said. That's fine. Go for it. I was handed. Even though I sent something that was very detailed, I was handed a, a note by the person that drafted telling me to redraft it. So we can do it, but we can't approve these minutes right now. Is there a motion? No, I move if we have if we don't have a complete draft that we agree to, I think these minutes get deferred until next month. Okay. So is that a motion to table? So moved. How does that happen? All in favor? Because you and I aren't there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, my problem. Yeah. Five current members. Once these comments are reflected, are those the only comments that are placed in there? I would say the next members will kind of give. So. So I yeah. So what what does this all mean? How does this get approved then? She's saying, can we comments? So, so I move that the redrafted comments be emailed to all members of the current HMC before the and approved before the end of our terms on June. Okay. I, I have another objection to, to the minute. Um, 4B, I, I don't know if I put it in there, but 4B seems to indicate that the HAC approved paying $25,000 for the trail repair. And I don't believe that we did that. I think what we said is that was there another way, if there's another thing that we can do, but there was no way that the HAC approved the cam manager spending $25,000 on the DG trails. We did not do that. We did not agree to that. So the way that these minutes are drafted, they seem to indicate that we did. Mm -hmm. you 
I don't know what that just, I'm to, sorry, to I couldn't, couldn't hear her. She needs to submit the. I also want to go on record that I only received those minutes yesterday from the time to the evening and see if I noticed who well with them. Yeah. Um, can we as a group agree on a deadline? Let's see. Do we do work days to have to get this done. So um, my guys suggest that comments on the minutes requesting revision are due tomorrow on Friday. That's not possible for me. Monday, can you do Monday? I'll do my best to have them done by Monday, but it can't happen tomorrow. Okay. All right. If okay. We're agreeing that everyone will do their best to have input in by Monday. The input end, that end of day. Asha has received on Monday will produce, she will produce revised minutes, which will go out on Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay. So this Monday. Is, on Monday. Is it, okay. is it deadline Monday, end of day, just to split hairs for fun? It has to be the end of day, and then she has to do it on Tuesday. Tuesday, does that work? Okay. Monday, end of, day. End of business day. Are you both good at that? Does that work? Because we, we, that. Shouldn't we shouldn't approve minutes that are incorrect. So we discourage that. Thank you. That would be very helpful. Thank you. All right. The public safety report. Uh, you never and it's also the right. So right here's this. Sure. Oh, yeah. oh, just we only have one. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. No worries at all. Uh, so yes, my name is Officer Morrison with the uh, University Police. Uh, so we have a, four brief incidences to report uh, that occurred here at the University Glen. Uh, so the first incident, so it would be June 5th at about 4 p.m. We had a report of two juveniles who were seen breaking large pieces of glass near the dirt path located at the 100 block of Cathedral Cove. Uh, the juveniles are residents of the University Glen. Their parents were contacted and advised of the incident. Uh, both juveniles later returned home uh, without any further incident and no criminal charges were placed against them. Uh, our second, I, yes. Um, when you say juveniles, that covers a lot of territory. Are yeah. we talking about post sports or are we talking about teens? Uh, so they'd be the teen, teen. teenage. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, our second incident, uh, June 5th, uh, I'm sorry, between June 5th to June 6th, between the hours of 9 p.m. to 9 a.m., uh, graffiti was located outside of the residence, uh, the perimeter wall near the 200 block of Anacap Island Drive. The letters that were graffitied onto the wall were PBK, which were painted in blue outside of the residence, which later was repaired. Uh, for this next incident, it does relate to the previous incident. Uh, during the incident, it was also reported that a white pillar uh, at the south entrance of the 100 block of Anacapa Island Drive was also vandalized. The letters, again, PBK found spray painted in yellow. And officers were later notified about a third graffiti location near the 200 block of the cathedral apartments. However, the graffiti was already repaired once we were notified. And the graffiti was a letter P and which was spray painted in blue uh, at the main entrance courtyard. Uh, our final incident here, uh, June 17th at about 3 p.m., a theft occurred in the 200 block of Smuggler's Cove, which was about a $300 table, was stolen out of the victim's driveway. The table composed of three female figures in long gowns that had a movable circular piece of glass attached to the figures. Um, that would conclude our incidents here. Can, can you tell me what color the blue spray paint was? Uh, all we have that it was blue. 
I don't know if it was a different pigmentation of the color blue, but we just have blue. Because although I have not reported, because I could never last fall determine the time frame of it. Okay. My patio uh, was spray painted with a kind of medium blue paint. Okay. Uh, and did you, so that, by chance, I, I'm sorry. I did not report okay. it because we were out of town when it occurred. Okay. And I had no idea of the time frame. Okay. Uh, and you, I didn't discover it for what I think is, well, I assume it happened while we were out of town. I didn't discover it for probably another two different weeks. Okay. So Usually when incidents happen like that, it's still good to report it to us. I, I agree, but if I can't give you anything to go on. Right. No, that I understand. But, uh, yeah. I, I still don't. Uh, I'm, I'm ending up having to finish all the things thanks to the vandalism. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I'm sorry. I agree. Were all three of those incidents the same night? I, so you? it was believed that it occurred. And you didn't find out who did it? Uh, at this time, we're still looking into it. Uh, so we're trying to see how many, how many leads that we have. So at this time, we don't have any named suspects. Uh, I mean, unnamed suspects? Unnamed <laughs> evidence or things like that. Any so it's still suspects. investigation. Yeah, still investigation. I need Columbo. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's good at that. Anything further? Uh, that'll conclude. Do we have a, an idea of how many parking citations were given? Uh, at this time, I do not know. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for coming. Right. Thank you. Always okay. appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for sure. All right. Uh, next up, we're going to uh, we've asked the new HAC incoming members to um, show up tonight and they have an opportunity to introduce themselves to the community. Um, so I'm going to do this alphabetically, and I'd like to start with Sandra Bolger. And thank you all for for being here this evening. Um, my name is Sandra Bolger. Most people call me Sandy, um, but because there was another Sandy, um, Tom allocated the name Sandra. So, but if you call me Sandra, I probably won't answer. Um, I've lived here for almost 10 years this August. So I've seen a lot of changes within the community. Some good, some not so good. Um, my biggest hope is that we can get people back in the meetings live versus Zoom, because I think it's really important for people to have an opportunity to voice their concerns. I hear from people all the time saying, well, no, it's, it's not worth going to the meetings because nothing changes, but things can change if we do come to the So that's pretty much my agenda. Questions? You, no, thank you. They, they did tell you thank this you is not much. a paid position. They yes, they did. <laughs> All right, just want to be clear. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Andrew Morris. I've been in the community for about three years now. Um, fell in love with it about four years ago. Um, we moved into the neighborhood. Um, I enjoy it here. It's beautiful. It's nice. I don't really have any bad things to say about it. Um, as far as the HAC, I like to see everything um, with an optimistic approach. I, I don't like to worry about the what ifs and whatnots. It's like, let's just move forward. Let's see where the common ground is and, and go from there. You know, the bickering, the back and forth. I'm not here for that. You know, I'm here to make the community a better place. I want my son to grow up here. Therefore, I'm not worried about the what ifs. I'm worried about how to make the future better. So hopefully we can all get together and do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Sasha Strunk. Nice to meet everybody face to face. Um, my family and I moved into the Glen in 2019. Uh, my husband and daughter are right over there. <laughs> uh, we moved in shortly before the pandemic kicked off, which I think offered us a really special and unique thing here in that 
our little one didn't really experience the quarantine aspect that other people did outside of this community because as anyone in this community with kids know you, there were lots of little pods existing in each block of neighborhood and it really created a strong bond between our block of neighbors. Um, my goal with joining the HAC is just to get more of the neighbors involved. There are so many units here and what I've seen in these meetings is that there aren't that many people that come to it and whether it's because whatever, whatever the reason is, I want to try to troubleshoot that and just get more people involved. Okay. All right. And um, Angel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, news from District 5. And oh. Thank you so much for it. Thank you. <laughs> We we appreciate your time. Um, <laughs> Where's Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So, so, uh, so for all of you who do not know, this is our District 5 representative to the Ventura County Board, and she has been gracious with her time working with us. She's a member of the Site Authority Board and has been truly a sounding board for for what might be possible for us in the future thank you yeah no thank you also i don't need to take up a lot of time i know you have a very packed agenda but um i just wanted to come in and, and check in last time i was here was uh, i think december uh right before the holidays and and uh and so there's been a lot going on uh on the board of supervisors i mean we're meeting twice a month now um last night uh we uh passed our our budget so a uh, very positive budget. It's a $2.86 uh, billion budget um, with a, a lot of work ahead of us um, to just continue to meet the need and, and serve our, our residents here in Ventura County. Um, so while I am not going to get into the detail of that, um, really what I, I was coming here today is uh, just to kind of check in and, and hear what's going on. And, and there is... Um, so there's hopefully opportunities um, in, in how we can work together um, as a member of, of the site authority, as was mentioned, um, but also your, your representative on the board of supervisors. And, um, and that's really what we're here. Um, Angel Garcia uh, works with me in the office, um, also uh, alum of CSUCI and uh, local residents. So uh, we do have those connections here and just here to serve you all. So uh, it's really nice to meet those who I haven't met before and uh, just want to make myself available and myself and my office available uh, for any questions and continue to work together um, with the concerns uh, regarding the site authority and and how we can uh, have a more positive relationship. Is what thank, you. Thank, you. thank you all. Thank you. Um, I know there are people in the community who have a traffic light question about getting out from Camarillo Street to Lewis Road mm -hmm. and whether we could get a protect right turn. There's a protect left turn coming from Lewis to Camarillo Street but people at Camarillo Street can be kind of blinded and, and stuck there, not able to get out, although it would not change the timing. Um, who do we talk to? Angel. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we can look into it, yeah. Yeah, we'll check with the uh, public works and, and see uh, what what can be, yeah, how we can look at that. So. The university owns Camarillo Street, and obviously the county the, is responsible yeah. for Lewis. So I don't know what you will talk to. The yeah, the signals yeah. may not be talking to each other right now. Yes, yeah, so and we do we have, have a, a tiring member for whom this is a... a um, well, it's a safety issue, right? Safety yeah, issue. it's a safety you issue. Mind yeah. Us that we should be yeah, absolutely. And actually, earlier today, um, I had a, a, a little meet and greet with our new uh, director within Public Works of uh, Roads and Transportation, so we can definitely follow up with Anita um, on that. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, Thank great you. timing. Thank, Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, site Authority Representative John. Thank you, everybody. Um, so first of all, well, thank you, uh, Council Member, for, uh, for for showing up. And then also really wanted to welcome the new um, 
HAC members, and I'm really excited to uh, work with you all and see how we can make you know a really great community even better. Um, I'm pleased to report that rooftop solar for townhomes, this has been um, sort of in the works for a while, but it's now approved. And the anybody wants to apply to uh, who owns a townhome to put a rooftop solar system on their house, the the uh, the legal paperwork is posted to the website on the universe on the owner's resources. Um, and then an update on Anacapo Canyon, which is a new community that's being built out. Uh, Anacapo Canyon is going to begin taking reservations at the end of this month for townhomes and single family homes. They're building two single family home models and a small cluster of townhome models, and they'll be ready to be shown. Um, and the, up to the, the timeline for construction hasn't changed. So there'll be people beginning to move in in the fall of this year. And all together, it'll take about a year and a half or two years to occupy uh, the community in full. And that's all the update I have. I'm, of course, happy to answer any questions. All right. That's, that's End of June is when they're going to start um, sending out uh, invitations for people to express interest in the, excuse me, in the homes. And they'll be selling, I believe it's August, is when they're hoping to actually uh, sign contracts. So, John, will they be sending that to everyone who's added their name to the interest list? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so is that list still open that anyone who's still interested could add their name? Absolutely. There's a link on both the, uh, the, the university's website as well as Comstock Homes, who's the developer of the single family attached and detached of so the single family homes and the town homes. Both of them have a link to a web uh, to an email address that adds you to that list. Thank you. Is, is that all of John's comments? Is that it? Yeah, John, are you finished or is there more? That's it, sir. Okay. okay. Can, I, can I ask a question? But someone shut me down if this has already been answered. So I've been curious what will be happening with the monuments that are sitting out at the corner of Channel Islands Drive and Camarillo Street. We're, we're we talk about the, mo the monuments are the signs that say University of Glen and there's the town apartment. I mean, we're, we're gonna have like five different brands now and this maybe six mm -hmm. seems very confusing. So I, I'm a little concerned if I wanna sell my home, people are seeing all these brands, I think. Are, are they gonna put monuments for each brand up or? What's, do you know what the plan is? And if you don't, I, say, I, then we can move on. Yeah, I, I don't, but I suspect that that there would be a, an interest with Kennedy Wilson, Anna Kappa King, and Ann Comstock, who's selling the uh, townhomes and single family homes in Anna Kappa King, and to make it look sensible. I think nobody okay. benefits from a hodgepodge. So okay. if if there's an interest, we uh, Tom, Tom, you know Ben. I'm confident we could work through and make it look cohesive. And those me, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it, it, again, just trying to make sense out of it. If I, if I want to sell my home, I don't want to have to explain kind of what's going on here with five different signs. And so, yeah, okay. I totally so, agree. And I think, I think everybody's interests are aligned there. So. Okay. All right. We, we've talked enough about it. You want to sell your home, you got a lot of explaining to do. Okay. To fully disclose. That's all I can say. But let's move on. Um, I see that I've been here and I didn't get a motion to approve the public safety report. Is it all moved? Okay. Second. All right. Any objection? No. Motion carries. Okay. And then is there a motion to approve the site authority report? It's all moved. Second. second. Objection? Yeah, I, I don't actually know why we have to do this, but it's a report. We can't. We can't disapprove we it. Well, we do it for the purposes of the minutes so that the minutes are clear. Um, common area maintenance report, Jake. Okay. Everybody, I'm going to log off. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, John. Good evening, folks. Hi, good evening. Good to see you. Um, wanted to first item up was that. Um, 
with the new budget starting on July 1, fees have changed and people are aware of this. And I sent out a notification um, by mail, which um, subly says notification should need to be sent out by mail. That's what it says. And so we sent that out to all single family homes. And um, tonight at the CAG meeting that was ahead of us, um, was brought up that we should send out an email as well at reminders, particularly those who um, would be changing their automatic payments. And um, we assured people at the, at the questioner, um, the representative on the CAG from the faculty that um, no late fees will be charged for um, for having the wrong amount, and because we will get the we will continue to um, bring that to people's attention and continue to send out the e blasts and if necessary to individuals and say be aware they fall behind because you haven't changed your um, charge. And so for the single families, um, it's increased to $313.86. And the townhomes, everybody knows it's 25%. And so the, for everybody, everybody knows this, but I will reiterate, um, the um, CAM charges are due, monthly CAM charges are due on the 10th of the month. And late fees can be assessed, which is $50 a month um, after the 25th of the month. So that's that's where we are on, on that. Okay, next item regarding the, um, the new members. I'm very happy that the new members are here. And I'd also like to thank Karen, Sandy and Tom for their two years of service and um, most helpful and have enjoyed working with you. Well, except for you. <laughs> we just kind of stepped in five months. Yeah, well, I contracted. I really appreciate Tom's willingness to build a very Appreciate his stepping in. So thank you. Um, next item um, regarding this is regarding the um, the DG paths. Um, UG Canvas work members of the bag who agreed that the trip hazards at several locations on the perimeter um, UG due to the excessive rain, spring rains shall be re repaired as soon as possible to the potential um, rutting of the DG paths um, due to the excessive rains. At the request of John Lazarus, with the site authority members of the bag unanimously agreed the safety hazard posed by the deterioration of the GDG paths shall be addressed by Gothic landscape. There are six proposals totaling $24,935. This amount is to be paid from the common area reserve line item of the 2022-2023 CAM budget for, quote, um, common area trails repair. And this is from common area reserves category 1801. Total budgeted in 2022-2023's um, in budget for this item is $25,000. So we are within budget and we've been authorized to proceed. And when was that meeting done and who were, were those people that approved that? The, the people, let's see, when was it? It was uh, two we a week ago. Two weeks ago, we one member was in attendance, and it took us about a week to get that approval. It was it was like on the eleventh. Is it? Do you remember? So we have two people that just decide how the money is spent. Is that it, the way it's? It, it comes now? down to that we presented it to the, the way this this works is that as the CAM manager. I put the proposals together. This was for a repair. It was not a project. And so I go to my vendor who does that, which is Gothic. I worked with them. I worked with them first and they gave me a price of over $40,000. Mm -hmm. And then I reworked it so that, that we eliminated the majority of the, the bat. And we also reduced the length of DG path that to really the minimum. 
and they reworked it and they also said that if they would do it all at one time, there would be an economy of scale. So they gave us a discount and we got it below the $25,000. And so in my conversation with John, John, John um, commented, because this is a health and safety issue, it needs to be, it isn't something we can continue to talk about it and say, oh, is there another way that we can do this? Um, there may be another way to do it, but we need to get this taken care of so the liability is, is um, addressed. I know that following the last HAC meeting, um, unfortunately, I was out of town on a personal item, but um, Mary and I drove around and she confirmed, you know, we went to the six locations in question and um, she confirmed that she could understand why there was the concern. If anybody would ask, well, why didn't she do it sooner? It was because the last rain that we had a gully washer was, was mid-May, if I remember correctly. It was like the first, first second week of May. And so we've been really holding off so that we, we only have to do this once. And I would invite anybody to go look at it, particularly there, there are those locations that um, it's kind of, sometimes it's, it's up to almost a foot that um, the edge of it is, is almost concrete. And so they really have to come back with a rototiller and break it all up and start over at those locations. And so, yes, I'm very willing to discuss further about, you know, are there other ways to do it or address the issue at specific locations that are reoccurring? But for this year, here there was the conversation following the HAC meeting and the conversation that the, the bag members had, John wanted said, I want the bag members to weigh in, which includes um, Mission Hills. And at that point, um, we did take a vote and it was unanimous to move forward with this, this proposal at this time. May I ask a question? So what are you doing for the net? Is there any plan to make sure that this doesn't happen again and we're not going to outweigh of $40,000 every year because this is not the first time that we've had to repair these DG pass. It keeps happening. Be, be aware that um, in my time here, with the, the, the part that had been eroded consistently every year is a lot. If you go to the 3000 block round of Channel Islands roundabout, as you go towards um, Camarillo and Channel on, um, Channel Islands, they're on the left. Um, it, has, it has degraded. We put a, a um, drain in there, a sump drain in there. We've done it every year we've done something. And that was that is one of the reasons why if you look in the operating budget, there's $4,800. That is really to address that one. And then in the last year, we've also had issues right at the, right at the edge of the park on Channel Islands across from the playground. And we previously in the years before we had not had deluges coming down the mountain, but this, this year, last year, and this year we have. And so that was the one place where last year we, we redid let, it. Let me support what Carolyn was saying. Mm -hmm. One of the, the things that we, I don't know whether we can get permission to do this because we might not meet the requirements that the university puts on us to mm -hmm. leave things in as natural a state as possible. Mm -hmm. But it is very expensive. And over my time uh, on the HAC, which spans five years now, we have replaced the G paths over and over and mm -hmm. over again when the heavy rains happen. So I know we have to rebid the landscape contract next year. Is there a more permanent solution um, that we could look at that um, would survive rain? I mean, I know there will be a cost to this upgrade mm -hmm. of coverage, but doing one of these once and then having it last uh, for a period of time, even if we bought ourselves only five years of life, that might end up being a win. So whether or not it goes in the landscape contract as a bid for something that the landscaper needs, because it might involve favors, or whether it becomes a separate project to actually pave the path, 
Understood. I, I, I guess, I guess well it's, think, yeah. it's, it's time to have that conversation. So my question was, we haven't done any investigation to yeah. figure out a different yeah, this way. Is the, this, no is the, this is the worst that is, it has been. And um, we haven't had rains like this, you know, that went from January through May. So... Well, we had pretty bad rains in 2019 that tore up that path that goes along yeah. the garden. So, yeah. Okay. It, it, but it, in that, that sense that it kept coming so that, you know, you really couldn't right. redo it. Yeah. Now, the other thing, just, just to be clear, mm -hmm. is, is that this is, um, Gothic has one more year on their contract after oh, this year. Yeah. So it is no, not. We go out, we go out to bid next year. Um, say, because next year is the bid year. No, no. Is it? Oh, no. No, okay. it's going to be that 25 26 will be because we've got this year, first year was, was 22 23, second year 23 24, third year 24 25. So I'd like to make a motion that the incoming board uh, ask the Landscape Committee to address this issue. I had a comment first. Sure. So I'd just like to add clarification. So this is my recollection of history. So first of all, when this issue was brought into the bag meeting, it was very unusual. The bag in the past has never been asked to deal with spends. We just budget and then whether it's spent or not is a whole different mechanism. But I, I do recall, um, and, and I want to thank Mary for going on a, a visit because when this topic came up, I said, Jake, I would like to see the worst of the worst. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I was out of town, so Mary filled in for me. I wanted to make sure that whatever we were being asked to provide input on, that it didn't conflict with what was said in the HAC meeting, because we discussed this. And um, my recollection, right or wrong, was that we left the issue up to Jake when he returned, because I think that's the whole reason why this all happened. I did because you were not here. So that's kind of my recollection of the context. Leave it up to the property manager to decide. And I, I was, so I was skeptical because, you know, you take, take dirt, throw it in the pole and step on it. And it's fine. But um, I learned that there's a little more to it. There's, a method they use to make sure the DG stays in place and so forth. So that's the context as I recall it. So uh, this was a kind of a highly unusual um, There's a process. Process. Yeah. Yes. And it's like I'm I'm unfortunately I wasn't here to yeah. So when I saw it I go, oh, okay. So I, I'm it's just why it came to the bag I'm yeah John, didn't John, ask any other companies to bid it. We're just paying like this is Gothic to do it. And the situation like is that, people. well, I would say that I would see this as a repair, not as a project. Okay. And so when there are projects, there's an overlay with projects. When projects go in, that means two, three, four bids. And that also means that in the project account, the 6% the management fee, whether it's mine or somebody else, goes into it as well. Mm -hmm. With the repairs, there that is there is no additional management fee, and that's that is and because it is within the purview of our contractor, that is why we the contractor. The scale of it this year is more than we would like. So, because it's a repair, you're not bidding it out because you already have a contractor. Correct. Okay. Mrs. Boyd has a, a motion that we ask the incoming HAC to address this with the Landscape Committee or the Landscape Committee becomes constituted for the coming year. Is there a second to that motion? I'm not sure I totally understand the motion. Let's say yeah, it again. I don't check that. So We're referring the matter to the so the land to for a more permanent solution. Yeah, we're just on how to handle BG pass off. Agenda of the new HAC. We'll just, we we'll shouldn't be setting it. the agenda of the new HAC. They can set their own agenda. It'll come up. Okay. The, the clarification I was asking for I had a home for 14 years with decomposed granite. There were often times there was too much rain or even car ended up on our front lawn. 
we refilled the decomposed granite. My question was, have we ever received a opinion from an expert or an engineer that this can't just be filled, that we've got to spend these thousands of dollars packing the DG? It's something I never did in 14 years, and we consistently had flood runoff. I mean, I lived in Westwood, steepest hill ground. We would just refill it. This compacting and the thousands of dollars it costs, I don't know that it's necessary. Thank you. Okay. Motion dies for one on the second. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the next item is that uh, we have gotten approval from the site authority. There, there have been a series of concrete trip hazards at the um, that have brought, come to our attention, and <laughs> sidewalks at various locations throughout the United, throughout the United States. Throughout, um, <laughs> university plan, and the total for this work is two thousand two hundred sixteen dollars and fifty cents. So how much again? Two thousand two hundred sixteen dollars and fifty cents. Um, these trip hazards will be funded from the common area reserve line line um, common concrete repair replace trip hazard and it's number four or three component in the um, common area reserve. Um, the total budget for the 22-23 budget in this line item is twenty thousand dollars, and the vendor is precision concrete. Who is our preferred vendor um, because they come and they evaluate it and they come at it. And this is someone that um, is very familiar with the university people as well as the Mission Hills people. And so I um, just wanted to let you know that, that there are 21 locations where they're going to be doing this. And so I wanted you, you to be aware of it. So when you see it, you go, I guess. Jake mentioned it to us. Well, didn't they just do that two years ago? We do it every other year, but usually we spend the whole twenty thousand. This was that there were there were ones that we didn't do last year that still that came up to the height that was a concern, a, a safety issue, and so we addressed it this year. So we don't address it because they change with the roots. Yeah, it's not uncommon to do it every year. At least in my experience, it depends on how active the roots are. So are we are we looking? Do we engage uh, the, the tree person um, to see if we should be doing some root pruning? Yeah, because we won't have any sidewalks left, right? After a while. That's that's, that's, that's <laughs> right. I mean, we every year. DJ, yeah, we can make more DJ. That's all active the tree and the, and the kind yeah. of tree. Yeah, that's yeah. Kind of, that's that's one of those that I've all when when it comes to the annual tree trimming. Yeah, and tree removal. It's like we have to look at specific locations and we have removed some, most of them it is you can or you don't necessarily need to. And so looking at what the budget allows and let's be honest, there are people with that taking down trees isn't the, the um, primary yeah. approach that people yeah. are comfortable with. And, and unfortunately, root pruning, getting a, what's the tree person called? Our first Getting an arborist to look at it and then uh, actually doing root pruning and then putting a barrier. I mean, that's expensive. So you right. kind of make the judgment call. Do you just slice the concrete year after year? Pretty soon we've installed new sidewalks. What yeah, the heck? Yeah. And then we well, and you do that too. Roof. You just chop the, chop the sidewalk section out and you replace it. So it's a... Right. So, or, or what happens is you have what we have around the roundabouts with the pavers mm -hmm. and they get uneven because of the roots and you take them out and you level, it, level it out, you level out the sand and then you put the pavers. Yeah. So I can't you because I'm now noticing on my patio a definite root intrusion from a tree that's within like two feet of my can we get out in the details? So, so my generalized question from my own experience is do we have a process for actually looking at this as it's beginning to intrude on our town homes, especially? Yes. 
okay. in the sense of that, that we have the arborist and where there are questions and there are con- intrusions or concern for intrusions, we have them look at it. Yes. So should and we-, we look to him as the professional to him or her to tell us, you know, is this something in the list of priorities, which ones would you put? So in when, what order? when you're planning that person, Mm-hmm. Um, add your just, name just not just add my name but I think a general request for people to go look and pay attention to the issue because I was crawling around because I was trying to look at furniture and that's how I noticed it and, and I, so I'm bringing it up not because of my personal case but to try to make a generalized statement right. that we really need to invite people to go look and probably tell them how to go look, what we're looking for, because okay. not all of us are experienced in this. Thank you. Yes, I've written it down. Thank okay. you. The next item, um, UG Cam has secured multiple bids for the resurfacing of the basketball court in the community park. The pricing will include striping for pick- pickleball the court. The striping of the pickleball court is included at no additional charge to all the bids we've received. Following conversation during the May 2023 HAC meeting, UGCAM is suggesting the HAC and UGCAM form a working group of those parties interested in pickleball to provide input to the basketball resurfacing vendor prior to signing the contract as far as the, what the line should look like. The resurfacing of the basketball court is listed in the 22-23 CAM budget under common area reserves line, common area basketball court resurfacing, category number 1206, and there's $20,578 listed there. The amount of this work is being priced um, with non because UG is a private um, community. <coughs> The maintenance item is suggested to be paid from the common area basketball line. The total project costs has has, has procured to we've we've procured to date. There's a price range between fifteen thousand three hundred twenty three dollars and thirty six cents to sixteen thousand eight hundred fifty four dollars. At this at this time. No bids include pricing for pickleball nets. Owners choosing to play pickleball shall provide their own temporary nets. And so um, I would um, request that the um, HAC help help me form a working group to um, pull together those interested in pickleball and to discuss um, their concerns and how that might fit together. I know at least three people who have talked to me about pickleball courts and and how how that works best. So. What I'm about that sure. court? I'm sorry. Oh. The kind of meeting that I was through, there was a discussion about the he was going to determine if there were more than just three people that were interested in the pickle ball sort of. So would he take the ball up again? The keg this afternoon? I think it's both said that. Yeah, that was not the real. He could go in, but he's interested in the pickle ball sort of. I don't know if you feeling one way or the other. Other than um, but around the same probably have the basketball farms and more balls. I don't know, but I can get a hold of her and ask her if she wants to follow up on that. Yeah. There might be some way that Put it out to the community, and put out to the people who were really interested in pickleball. So it was only three people. Mm-hmm. I, I think the other thing that, that also came up in conversation um, with it with regarding the pickleball is that if it is no additional charge, that the lines are there, it would increase the kind of the amenity kind of potential. Um, and it's kind of like, why would you do it if if it can be done and at no 
additional charge. You know, well, I'll I'm, tell you why not so. to do it because people are going to come to the community from outside the community and they're going to use it, use it, use it every single day. And it's just going to be a so, magnet for people outside the community because there, there are not enough pickleball courts anywhere. So if we were limiting it to people in the community, that's one thing, but th there are not enough pickleball courts in Camarillo and they're going to come here all day, every day, all day. In my research, I follow the budgets very closely. And I also follow the reserve studies very closely. I don't have a strong enough signal to pull up my numbers. So I'm just estimating as best I can. The basketball courts originally had a reserve amount of $5,000. Let's say 6,000 at the most. In one reserve study, it was 6,000. The following year, it was also 6,000. Mysteriously, it's now jumped up to over 20,000. I don't doubt your word, Jake, when you say there's no additional cost, but I called the pavement company and I said, if we need to resurface our basketball court about how much is this gonna be? And told me we literally measured to the square inch. I'd need to come out and look. I said, fine, tell me another story. If it's a basketball court and you'd also like it to be a pickleball court, how would this happen? He said that that includes a tremendous amount of work because first you have to resurface the basketball court. Then you have to lay down the lines for the basketball court. Then you have to let those lines cure and someone has to come out on a totally different day in the future and paint the pickleball courts, which would be a different color. Mm -hmm. That would lead me to believe there's absolutely no way in hell there's no charge for doing this, no additional charge. I would like to know at what bag meeting the 6,000 at the most jumped up to over 20,000. And now we're going to have a pickleball court at no charge. It's really kind of like me going into Neiman Marcus and I pay $400 for a perfume and they give me a lipstick for free. It's kind of nonsense. Okay. I'm at the the next time. thing that I want to bring up is, is no, I want to finish the money part. In the reserves, it shows an amount for basketball court. Mm -hmm. And then it shows an amount for, what do you, what do you call the back backboards? Black and back backboards. So we're going to refinish the basketball court, but you're not going to redo the backboards. Not at this time. Why can't we do the back? If, I don't think it's necessary at this point with our finances being as bad as they are. But if you were going to the basketball court, why would you resurface the basketball court and not replace no, we'll the back? We can look at replacing the back backwards then. I mean, we I don't want to be economy, trying to be. I'm right. tired of hearing economy when something goes from six thousand to twenty thousand. Toby, with the with the what I want steps. to not happen is another tot lot where sixteen months later it's still not finished. It seems you don't to want us to spend money. You, mm -hmm. we want to spend forty thousand dollars, and everybody goes, "Oh, we don't want to spend money." I'll put the project together and give you the project, and you tell me you want to do it, and I'll do it. Didn't we do that already three years ago? No, we have not done the paving on that one. Six thousand to twenty thousand is highly irregular. Yeah. A point of information on this, the way prices change in a reserve study is that the reserve study consultant, when we do a level one study, establishes baseline numbers. During our level three studies, which we do every year, the reserve study consultant 
looks at the items, looks at price changes in items, and over time, those prices are adjusted to reflect what it's actually going to cost to do a project. There has been a substantial increase across many lines in our reserve studies, both because of inflation and because of looking at the, the base price difference that has happened as Ventura County has become more urbanized and therefore more expensive to do business in. Well, I, I agree with what you're saying. I'm familiar with reserve studies. Reserve studies much larger than ours. But if you give an example of A, and it went up 18% due to inflation, and you give another example of a tree, and that went up 25%, and you look at the price of uh, pipes, copper pipes for plumbing, and that went up 35%. I'm saying the basketball court went up over 300%. Okay. That seems silly. Okay. This isn't decided tonight. My question was, could I get, have input from the community with the support of the HAC to look at the pickleball and to have, have input from people who enjoy pickleball your points are well taken. We don't know what the implication of that is. We haven't done it yet. We haven't signed off on it yet. We're putting information together. I do have prices for it to be a project because the ground that because the reserve study says yes, the usable life has now been done. And so you look at the list and you go, these are the next things you're going to do. And so that's what I'm doing. And so my ask tonight is can we have a can you can put it together? I can put it together. Uh, a working group, you know, just like we did with the with the playground, had had a group of people look at it and have a meeting. Where we're talking about one meeting, you know, two meetings to say, you know, what what how can we do this so I can come back and more clear and give you give you more clear information about what is necessary in our. Our opinion as managers, it's time for it to be resurfaced. Well, I have concerns. I also believe that people from other neighborhoods come to the dog park and use the dog park that we have to pay mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. Correct. They use the basketball park. And then now we, we have the pickleball courts, which is going to be a huge driver of people in the community, not to mention the new uh, area. Because the people are going to come in and they're going to look at the new houses and they're going to say, oh, let me see the neighborhood. Oh, there's a pickleball court. I'm going to go there because there, there's just no pickleball courts. So, so I want to research. I want to know how do we keep the pickleball courts for the people in our neighborhood okay. that pay for them? Can, can I throw, throw two cents in? So been through that discussion a lot because I've the only because we've the only method we have for limiting usage of our big park to residents is through the parking that's it the police department needs to troll that area continually throughout the day if non-residents come in and park adjacent to the community park you ticket them we have no other tool that is it. That's the nature of the beast. I mean, that's, I mean, I went through that a lot trying to well, figure out how we do it. Cause I've seen people drive up from the outside, tell me they're from the outside, bring in dogs without tags, seen it all. So we need have police enforcement. Parking, does that work? If they enforce it, sure. They come in and write a ticket, you bet. So people will come down. So the so then we would just be by and having a pickleball would be invite more people to come and park on the streets that we already don't have enough park because the people are going to park there and they're going to be waiting in line to use the next pickleball court so it's not even it's going to be worse than dog walk because they at least leave well if they're non residents they get so pickleball why don't, so, why don't so we do? may I, may I ask anyway, a question I'm, by people who play pickleball and know more about this than I do? 
do pickleball players normally have their own nets and other accoutrements? They do. Yeah. Well, I was watching in New York City just last week, and the nets were there provided. Right. But I, that's the there new. were 10 people waiting to get a cord, and they had squares. So they had 10, 12 that's squares. All I asked for. Waiting. Yeah, so, I guess. So can so I, I think we should. Group to I, get this. I hear what you're saying, Carolyn, that we can bring up the group. We can talk to these people who play at other places in Camarillo and say, What's your experience? What's the parking? What's the, you know, we can, we can ask those questions. I can't answer those questions. So I'm asking, can I go ahead and do that? Do you want to do it? The last thing that has to be a part of this conversation is Dr. Slaughter Greer, Jeannie. Okay, what about her? Not this CAG meeting, but the previous CAG meeting, she brought up the fact that there are a tremendous amount of people in the neighborhood who play basketball either as singles or as parts of groups. And she wanted to know how this was going to affect them because so many people do now play basketball okay. that they would suddenly be displaced. Mm -hmm. That was the final comment. Okay, good point. Need a process. I give a motion, Tim. What's that? It's a, you just said we need a process. Were you gonna make a motion? Uh, I make a motion we follow through on Jake's request to at least start the what exploratory. It's a working group. Working group. Working group uh, to determine group on how pickleball might be integrated into the. And I think it's probably bigger than that. Group. With it's more about the basketball because you're asking about questions. You're asking about questions about the the use of the basketball. Camry is installing a huge pickleball complex. That's what I've been told. Right. So that might help. Second the motion. Okay. All in favor? I'll go aye. that far. I I against. Against. Okay. Okay. No, motion carries. Okay. On to landscaping. Um Gothic landscaping completed the state mandated un mandated. 100 foot brush clearance at the perimeter of UG by the deadline of June 1st, 2023. The verification of completion from Ventura County Fire Protection is forthcoming. I looked on the website and I had seen it. That's usually that's where we pick it up. And as soon as we get that, we will put that together in a letter that will replace the one from last year. With with the letter from the site authority and the insurance information, as well as the um, certificates for the um, parcels. Uh, next item: the site authority has asked CSUCI facility services to provide a map showing the extent of the hundred foot brush clearance at the perimeter of University Glen. Perimeter: it's basically from a property. Any of the 100 foot brush clearance area that does not fall within the property lines of the homeowners will be reimbursed to the UGCAM budget by the site authority. Gothic will be asked to determine a price for the extent of the brush clearance, which is the site authority's responsibility. For your information, Gothic's line item for brush clearance in their contract is $12,702. $12,702.90. So it would be a portion of that, a percentage of that may be reimbursed back to our budget. So what is the brush clearance? Is that where they just- 100 foot. Weed eater? No, 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 no. This is like you go along here. Yeah, with the weed eaters all along like Long Great Canyon Creek and all along Channel, Channel Island. So it's it's 100 feet from the structures. So it's just a weed eater where they cut the grass right. down. Or cut the grass down, or they also make sure that there's everything is lifted at least six feet from the ground. All, all trees need to be at least six feet from the ground so that so it doesn't- migrate up the tree. And if there are trees, they, they try to thin the trees and they remove a lot of the palms, you know, that grow in the, grow in the. Uh, so may I go back to ditch. an old question? Yes. The old question is that hundred feet from our buildings clearly leaves the territory that is officially University Glen. 
and enters territory that is officially the universities. That's the point. Yes. You said they're reversing. Yeah, that's oh, what okay. that's what we're doing. And I spaced out. So so yeah. maybe I applaud the yeah, fact that that's, that's something that, 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 that John has been listening to. Thank and you. so he's he's implementing we, that. We, we haven't gotten the map yet. You know, I had hoped to be able to say, yeah, here's the map and this is how much it is, but that isn't. And well, continue to dog it, it through the- We have one victory. Reconcile it. May we cheer our one victory. I, so that's a lot of work. Just seems like that. So it's $12,000 for all the brush clearance, but fixing the DG path, they charged us 40,000. That was the bid. That just seems so- uh, Okay, uh, you and I can disagree on it. Next item. Okay. Um, well, let me pause. Jake, would you would you be amenable to allowing um, anyone to review your contracts or proposals? I have to talk to John. I work for John in that regard. So if you don't if you don't like the number, look at the contract. See what you think. It's a bid. It's a bid. Excuse me, a bid. I'm not qualified to. Um, on June 15th, members of the community noted a. Uh, a tractor trailer drove over the east portion of the roundabout planter at the intersection of Anacapa Island Drive and Channel Islands Drive. UGCAM is working with Gothic to determine costs associated with remedying the situation. Site Authority and CSUCI's project manager, uh, and manager of Anacapa Island Drive. So CSU, I, CSUCI's project manager associated with um, Anacapa Canyon. I'm not contacting Anacapa Canyon. We're going through university. So they have that. And that came up today at the CHMB. Yes. Um, they also ran over the curve grass on the Anacapa Canyon. Yeah. Um, yes. Back and forth, back and forth, and they wound up going up over. So, over. Right. Um, Right our house. I thought they were coming into our house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So is there damage there too? Um, like on the lawn or where? Yeah, this this is what like plants are from. But they went over the concrete too. Oh, okay. Square, uh, the now. Right, right. But they went to yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, I want to say thank you to the member of the community that filmed that, got the license plate, and reported that to Jake because you know what we would be paying for that repair and those replacement of the plants if we didn't know who to go after or who did it. So if you see something, say something. And video thank you. Thank you. Because we're all in this together and we all have to pay for it. Next item. The spraying of the broadleaf plants, the clover in turf was completed by Gothic in the community park area. Um, notified notifications were sent out to the community and no herbicides were sprayed in the dog park itself, the fenced in area or within 10 feet of community garden. And they're continuing to look out, look for the rest of the community um, of where, how they're going to pursue that for the rest of the community. Yes. Pause. So are they potentially going to be spraying the broadleaf treatment in our turf areas outside our homes? They have. Because I've got. Yeah, they, yes, that is the plan. I got clover. Yeah. 90% clover. What? So no, is, is right. their contract clover. to maintain the integrity of the turf or just to. Cut the grass and then wait till somebody complains. What's their contract actually say? I'll have to look at that. You and I can look at that. Together. But you don't know? Not off the top of my head. It just seems to me that they they're, they should maintain the integrity of the turf. They should have something. I think, I think we also have to know, how, you're assuming there was integrity with the turf. 
There were they, they yes. Okay. Uh, UGCAM continues to receive complaints regarding um, um, Gothic's use of blowers throughout um, UG. And Gothic is notified about that and we continue to work with them and they continue to um, work on that. A, partic a particular concern is the street gutters and potential damage to parked cars using blowers. In discussion with Gothic, it was determined one potentially satisfying method to address the debris in the street gutters is to have the cars not park on the streets by a designated for a designated day of the week for Gothic to use their walk behind VAC to pick up the debris in the street gutters. Proposal. They used it in our alley today and it was very effective. The proposal is that UGCAM proposes that on Mondays of each week, there would be no street parking between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. on the the 100 to 400 block of Channel Islands, Landing Cove, Anacapa Island Drive, and Smuggler's Cove, or Smuggler's Cove. UG can propose that on Tuesdays of each week, there would be no street parking between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. on Channel Islands Drive, 700 block to 2000 block, Kyler Harbor Drive, Fry's Harbor Drive, East Platts Harbor Drive, and Twin Harbor Drive. Um, we would propose that this practice would begin on um, the week of July 10th, that's after the holiday, and Gothic has agreed that they would post signs notifying um, people not to park um, in those areas. Temporary signs? Temporary signs, yeah. yeah we're not gonna... Didn't we try this before? This is, in the past, the um, university had a street cleaner. Yeah. And they said it was like Tuesdays, no one right. is supposed to park. So, yeah. In the olden days, when I first moved here, they had street sweeping, as you say, the university. But it was one side of a street, one side of a street, one side of a street. If you are saying Channel Islands from 1 to 300, Landing Cove from 1 to 300, and a capital. There's no place for all of those okay. people to be. That's why we're talking. So what what is what among us talking? What would be an, a reasonable approach? I'd like to make a suggestion mm -hmm. um, because after because this was raised in the CAD this afternoon, some discussion of, and after the CAD, I heard from from a homeowner who said, "Well, you know, it's a great inconvenience to me." Not to be able to park my car, then I'd be to be stuck with the slings and arrows of the blowers. This might be a topic which is appropriate for a community survey just to find out, you know. I mean, this is a pick your poison, you know, do you feel put out by not being able to park, or do you feel put out by the blowers and what that? May or may not do to cars. I'm not. Have we ever had a complaint that a car was damaged? To date, no. Okay, and I'm not defending. Well, I'm, I'm neutral on the topic, but I'm saying this is exactly the kind of thing that maybe we should just do a poll. Well, I think that the, the inconvenience is contrived or created by the suggestion to clear out all of the cars on all of the streets floor block radius, but every, once a week, all day long, that's a major inconvenience, but there's no way those people are going to sweep the streets, all the streets once a week. They're just not going to do it, but they can do, and they haven't cleaned the streets for months, so why couldn't they just do it on Tuesdays, whatever, one side of the street, and then you can have house cleaners, babysitters, workers on the other side of the street. What up? I think it has to do with that they do they right now do their mowing on Monday and Tuesday. And the 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 streets that I listed are the are are on Monday, those are the streets that they're mowing. And then the and on Tuesday it's the other streets. So, you know, and admittedly on in the north side, north of um, Long Creek Canyon Creek, there's only parking on one side, you know, so it's like, where do people park? And that's because people don't park on both sides, whereas over here they do. 
Yes, it's coming. Yeah. I'm, I'm not opposed to the idea that you suggested about polling, which which do you want to do it basically? The blowers or moving your car. Personally, I wouldn't want to move my car all the time, but that's anyway. What if is it an option, Jake, like what you were suggesting, but maybe just have like eight to ten is channel islands off. No part of ten channel islands. Ten to twelve on that so. Well, to two on. I, I'm open to suggestions. I'm trying to figure yeah. out how to. Well, how, just earlier, it seemed like, okay, well, that makes sense because there are lesions in the street, but that's a huge amount of parking mm -hmm. pulled away all at one time. And you should see, I'm on the corner, I'm on the street side. So when they do their blowing, it blows up on my umbrella, it blows up on my table, it ruins my whole patio. And, and they do it without, it's to it create a disaster. So I should resolve the trees and the flowers which are falling, they stick to the road. You know, the red flowers and see if they're clean it. Stop it, you know. So, okay. I, I, suggestions on how to proceed from my standpoint, I would have no problem saying, okay, are there, there are weeks, there are four weeks in a, in a month. You know, are you, do you have one street that doesn't have it? You know, so that they actually can do their job on one street, once one week a month. You know, and see, and that that is not a leaf season. That is not a fall. They do it more regularly. But that is, or I'm I'm interested. You know, do we want to do a survey, and and what will that look like, and so that we can say, you know, we ask for people's. Um, it's basically two questions, right? Send it to me, blast. Say, please answer this question. Simple. Well, I think we have to get a better plan than clearing out every single car yeah. every yeah. once a week. You go to speak up for people. That's, that's so, so maybe the thing, maybe what I can work on is to put a, a, a scenario together that shows over a month that there are four streets and that that there are um, each first, second, third, fourth week, one of the streets is clear and you can park on your neighboring street. Mm -hmm. And that would also mean that they have a few signs to put out too. But they would they would put out their signs, you know, the week before saying that here we're going to um, have you move. We aren't we aren't um, charging anybody or towing anybody's car. We aren't doing that. It's just so that they can use their vacuum. So just to be radical, oh my. for those folks who are really upset about leaves lasting in between these sweeping mm -hmm. times, I solved that problem with a broom pretty, in a, oh, that's pretty, what I mean. exactly. pretty, pretty efficiently. Yeah. And, um, and now that we have green waste uh, trash cans, doing that and putting the leaves in our compostable barrels, is doesn't even require requesting a no, I haven't requested a burlap for a while. I have a compostable bin there. So you sweep your street? I I'm not it. sweeping the street. I am okay. not sweeping. I actually I, I, I sweep my alley more than I sweep my street. I sweep my alley. The debris was very thick. It's multiple months of debris. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know how we do my street training, how it does work? They say, okay, no parking from 7 a.m. or whatever. Right. And people do clear. It's not the whole entire neighborhood, but it's just certain sections. Seems to work really smoothly. Yeah. Well, Why don't you do something? It's just chunked down a little bit as far as the young. Um, well, that's what that's what I think. Let's do it like the since do, well, Delmar does it. Yeah, we think we need a vacuum streets every single week. Right. Once a month. And it can gently blow, just don't blow. You know. There are dramatic blowers. Okay, Delmar. thank you. Okay, so I'll put, I'll put more of a proposal together. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention that um, UGCAM is in communication with the site authority and CSUCI facility services regarding the 
single family homes, the additional paint colors, and how that is determined. Um, because they, they gave us the colors back when the townhouses were being done, paint, repainted several years ago. And they didn't finish it out by saying, okay, this is what the same, which colors go for single families like they did for the townhouses. Okay, so I've, I've asked them for that clarity. And part of that is because um, we are in conversations with the site authority about how to um, encourage and maintain the single families so that they're painted on a regular basis. And um, this, is, this is one piece of that puzzle. And at the same time, we would like to um, send out an e-blast probably at the beginning of, the, of this fiscal year and, in, and send it to the single family homeowners and say, would you please document you know, when the last time you painted your house was? So that so that we have a a record of when when things were done, so that so that we can um, monitor it. Right now, it basically comes down to at the point that a, a house is sold is when it comes up, and the site authority um, can say you need to do this now or or not or or, or we. Depends on who the seller is, whether they make the well. They the they house. generally do. They generally do, yeah. and so because it's generally agreed that it, between seven to ten years is the length of a time of a paint job on stucco, and so that is that is that is where this is coming from. So just wanted you to be aware of that. Yes. When we moved in ten years ago, we came, but um, we were required. To now, our coat lasts a lot longer than paint does. So, say that when we do. Uh, our house still has no problems. I think that's a good one. And the you know, is cheap for like the mm -hmm. but it holds up a lot better. regular paint. So, and I want fog coating. I'm having a terrible time finding something that is moving. And so we need to. It's a lot okay. I get it. It's a lot yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can find some one. Okay. So that. So I wanted to bring that out so people are aware that we're working on that as well. Um, so what does that mean for people that want to paint their house now? Because there was someone that painted their house across the street from me. They, they got approved. They matched what was there. So we're putting old colors with new colors. That's why I'm asking the. <laughs> that's why I'm asking the. Um, the I thought they were saying, one. "Okay, you just you're the designers, you know, or do you let it go and you would, let everything you develop?" It would be very reasonable to let them allow us to make this decision, but I know that has never occurred. But if they that. don't wish to make it. Taking control of this would be an excellent idea. But I thought we were we had the new paints because the old colors weren't available anymore. Isn't that the story we heard before? That's, they, that's the story. So how did they, the the house that just get painted? You they match the old. They match the old. Yeah, the custom. Color so we've asked for direction used. from the site authority and facility services <laughs> on. No, safety. they didn't. They used the new color. I saw it. I have a picture of it. They used a new color off the new palette. So I have a picture of their bucket. Yeah. Okay. And this is why I've asked for direction on it. Okay. Um, just we are continuing to talk with the site authority and police department about a safety day in the near future. And um, I'll keep you posted. Things have been very busy. Um, financial report um, for for May. Okay, is that for the month of May, um, the budgeted amount was one hundred sixty thousand seven hundred three dollars and sixty eight cents. The operating expenses were one hundred sixty six thousand one hundred ninety one dollars and ninety four cents. So there was an a negative variance of, of 
$5,428.26. Um, overall, year to date, the budget amount is $1,790,617.77. And the actual is $1,798,000. $197.96. So there's a negative variance of $7,580.19. That doesn't say it's like a 0.3%, you know, different variation. The only thing that I would bring to everybody's attention is that um, with the water right now, the year to date, we have a negative variance of $32,388.75. And for the sewer, we have a negative variance of $35,805.88 for a total um, utility negative variance for water and sewer of $68,194.63. So, you know, we're not spending money in a lot of other areas. Um, if we would spend everything that is budgeted, we would, we would, have a negative variance of more in the $68,000. So you mean we're over budget on water $68,000 over water on sewer. sewer? This is the increases that we that um, we were not apprised of during the, the budgeting process that, that has come from the site authority. From the university and utilities running through the university. So when do you get your numbers? Huh? At the last minute, or you mean, I mean regarding yeah. yeah. What we do is we ask the university what number you use. And how long does it take between the request and the availability of the numbers? Well, considering that it's a year, it's a year ahead. Uh -huh. um, and they have, they generally in the past have not been able to give us good numbers. You well, know, we've asked them for the numbers because. Our actuals were all over the map for the last years. So, so actual number matches the budget. Um, today it hasn't. Mm -hmm. Very, yeah. very rarely does the time it. No, that's fine. It very rarely does because that that is something that we as managers can manage. You know, you you forecast and you know what you spent in the past and. Have, Mm -hmm. And here, particularly with the utilities, with the water, and everybody knows about the water rate study and the infrastructure and all of that, this is coming. And, um, and so we've tried to bake that into the new budget, clearly, but some of that is based on the fact that this, this year's budget is, is skewed in a way that we didn't see coming. And um, how long, how long do you keep the data on your actuals? Do you well, ours, ours go all the way back from, from when we started. Yeah, but, five years? And, and five, six years. Six years. <laughs> but the other thing that's also true is that we have asked, we have, in, Tom, you may want to comment on this one, Yeah, is that we have asked for the actuals, you know, and, and um, we also asked for the, the volumes and the various EDUs, the uh, how they determine what they bill us. Okay, and so we've done that. And um, do audits. Do audits. What? Do audits. The fact that they give us a number. That I we don't audit them. I mean, we, we base yeah. it as the bill and we... Well, that's what I mean, but we do a budget process, but the budget doesn't mm -hmm. be audited. There is... I'm, I'm not an expert or follow the budgeting of the site. So, so you're, not, you're not budgeting? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no that's and not so what he's saying. I'm not aware of the auditing process so, of the utilities budget and CSU's budget of which we are one twelfth. Okay, so you keep a separate account for these things and yep. they keep a separate account? On their budget side, their accounting system and your accounting system yeah. is separate? Mm. They, yeah, we yes. have our own. Yes, yes. Well, ours are separate. Mm -hmm. they, ask, they send us bills each month. Uh -huh. And in the last two years, three years, we've gotten them to parse out how much for each. We used to just get one number. 
And then we said, well, give us for the potable water, the reclaimed water, the sewer, and what's the other one? The um, sewer and uh, there's one other one, that there were four items. And so that- and now the infrastructure. Number. And the infrastructure. And so those are the four that now it's a breakdown that you can, I can show you, we've got it in, in the monthly statement. You can come and look at it at, you know, we have a hard copy in the office. Okay. Everybody can come and look at it. Okay. And it says, this is what it is. We have, when we were budgeting, we did ask for the, the person who is, uh, works with the water and sustainability. And she gave us the number. And, you know, it's a, an example is that in, in our budgeting process. And everybody can get to support that seeing that. It's available for that, right? Uh, which? The, the numbers. numbers. The numbers, yeah. The numbers, the numbers there's they give us. Oh, they give us. Not numbers, the numbers they give us and how they got our numbers. And you show that to our agency. It's there. I mean, oh, anybody who yeah, can go it, and, you know, it's all in here. It's right in here. Right. And so from, but from my standpoint, I do not manage how they determine that. Okay. okay. And so that's one of the reasons why we've had this water rate study is that, that the site authority and the CSUCI is saying how much it takes to do the infrastructure that in the past has not money hasn't been taken out for before. Okay. And so that is that is what this this piece is. And so along with this is that that we had asked, we had asked for a number for sewer and for the, for the com this coming years budget. And they gave us a number and we were kind of went up and down and now we're probably about $2,000 under from what they got the actual amount of, from the study what it should be. And so, you know, it's like it goes a little bit all over the map and then it comes to a number and that's the number we're going with. And we'll see what it has to happen. Okay. So I would like to just back up just a little bit. You mentioned that you're currently looking at 68,194.63 over for various forms of water and sewer. Water and sewer, right. And you also mentioned that you're possibly going to be able to save money in other areas. Well, you look at it and go, right now, the way it works is that if you look at, there's the, the negative variance for the year is 7,800, 7,500. Okay, so, so, so the would, difference between it is what we are not spending in other parts of the budget. Okay, so it, it, this is, this is I, I'm only concerned with my pocket. Yeah. And if we're 68,000 over budget, Every person must kick in one hundred and one dollars and forty eight cents. <laughs> Potentially, that's yeah. my mentioning. Right. It's nice though if everybody watching who isn't following this twenty four hours a day understands they may get a hundred and one dollars and fifty cent bill. That, that's clear. Right. And that bill's probably for the understreet water leaks that we've had because we get to pay 100% of those. Hello, for the report, for the responsible there are no leaks because we can't join There's no leaks? So, okay. Respectfully, yeah, this is the big story. Respectfully, I have one question about water. Yes. I learned something new. It never occurred to me that fire hydrants mm -hmm. were potable water. I didn't know that. They have okay. to be. They have to be. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Okay. We have pipes at the ranch and water is not drinkable. It's just meant to put out a fire. During all of this time when the new development was doing their soil compaction, mm -hmm. And we have the videos from people up at the water tower where they had flooded the whole area. Do we know whether or not they used the fire hydrant? Because they were using the fire hydrant to fill their water trucks for dust mitigation. There were meters on those on those um, fire hydrants. There's meters on the fire hydrant specifically for them. 
Yeah, right. We, we, yelled right loud, we yelled loud and clear at the beginning and everything that Anacapa Canyon is using in terms of constructing water is separately metered and paid for by them. Yeah, is that it, right, Tom? It, it was true after the first couple of months. We had to remind them that the water <laughs> had to be metered and they had to read them correctly. Remember, they were reading them wrong. So, yes. Was it corrected? In yeah, the it was budget? corrected as best I could tell. I, they wouldn't let me in to read the meter itself. I could only read one meter right at the edge of the curve. So I was going out and there is, there, double checking. There meters. is now a not doing charge that. that shows how much ours is, and then it shows how much but, goes to the structure. Can I make a comment? The whole water thing, I'm still very uncomfortable though with, <laughs> with how we're being so. built and what we're being built with. And I'm we I'm not sure we've still resolved whether or not they're gonna backfill us. I think they are. Yes, okay. I believe that. It's like right. we somebody should be jumping up and down. It's not right. I believe that that's what's going to happen. This is where we can. What, what I have been saying for the entire year about water is now absolutely true and it has the kind of catastrophic impact that we have all mentioned. Um, I learned a new thing uh, while I was out of town the LA Times, and that is the average in the state of California water consumption of potable water by an individual is 89 gallons. And I wonder how many people are willing to answer a census and tell us how many people are in their house and whether we can multiply that 89 gallons by the number of people and try to figure out, because I don't think we have profit use going on. But if we could get some measure of the kind of expected average use, uh, might give us another interesting arguing point. 89 a day? 89 I, a day. Can I, can I, I'm sorry, I know you want to move on. Um, can I make a comment to the new HAC members? So this <laughs> one water is, water is one, one reason to do this, but every year in October, there's a year-end reconciliation where they... Jake knows all about this. It's to us, it's a black box. Site authority staff goes through Jake's books and they re basically reallocate stuff between us and Kennedy Wilson. And it's a, it could be a huge issue. We, we look at just big picture numbers of combined of what we pay with them, but then you reallocate between us. And you, you heard a comment I had a minute ago is I'm concerned they're going to go through this process during the reconciliation and push a whole bunch of water costs over to us based upon the arguments that we've had. Mm -hmm. It's not right. We aren't part of the process, but someone needs to see what goes on behind the scenes when they start shuffling so, costs back. Uh, you're saying declassified. Can you please help me understand? Are they declassifying the I, I can, between I, their system and their system? I can help you understand. Tom is my Well, we're getting too far into it. All, all I'm saying is keep your eye focused on the October reconciliation. Ask to get in there and see what the crap they're doing because it's always a black box. New numbers pop out and we go, oh, all right. The reconciliation, our fiscal year ends And the first quarter, October, end of September. By the ground subways, the site authority needs to publish the reconciliation by the 30th of, of September. And so at that point is when we will know what deficit, if there is one, what it is, and then how, how it is allocated to the single families, townhouses, and the apartments. Yeah, but that's up to their discretion. Well, it yes. Is a black box. Yes, yes, it is. Decide where to allocate and I mean, I mean the way they're usually, yeah, it's, it's hard to say. Well, this is why we have requested representation on the audit committee, and we'll continue to follow up on that. So, I just want to for the new members that, that the time frame is that's the time because at the end of September, and then what happens is that during October, we we send out a letter for that goes out November 1st saying this is how much you owe or this is how much credit you get. 
and that's that is to be reviewed. Um, one year the same man was not paying, did get credit. One credit, 51. <laughs> so, okay, that's all I've got. Thank you, folks. Can I you to accept Jake's report? I, yes. Okay, second. Okay, any objection? No. Okay, uh, motion carries. Thank you. All right. Um, Sandy, do you have an uh, update from the bag? This is a collaborative report between Tom and I. Generally, the bag does not. Thanks, Andrew. And that's just to provide your contact information right there. Uh, thank you so very much. Thank you, Angel. I appreciate you guys. So generally, the bag does not meet in June. Uh, Jake called the special meeting on the, for June 6th. Um, everyone except Ben was in attendance. Um, ben Gordon from Kennedy Wilson Multifamily. He was represented by Dave Paula uh, from the apartments. The items covered, first of all, that the site authority underestimated the fixed monthly sewage fee to be allocated to you, Glenn. Jake is asking facilities for an explanation. Facilities intends to pass this increase on to New Glenn throughout the upcoming fiscal year, even though it is not budgeted. We have consistently been told that money is not budgeted, not be spent, which admittedly has never really been true. We overrun our budget all the time, particularly for non-discretionary utilities. Sandy and Tom had a heated debate with John Lazarus and indicated that we do not accept the increase and that the site authority needed to eat the increase. We are not hopeful. Note that the site authority was responsible for the budget estimates that proved to be in there. We have no official direct access to the vendor. In this case, this is generally all about water. We have no direct access to Camrosa Water to verify anything that we are told. Uh, about water costs and water usage. Uh, we do have access, um, and I'm hoping Tom will give lessons uh, to anyone who would like to learn. Uh, Tom has experience reading meters and keeping track, and I would recommend that that's something that folks might want to take over uh, from what he's done. Jake raised the concern as to whether the $92,531 infrastructure charge in the budget included both water and sewer structure. Um, because at that point, the study had not been finalized, um, we didn't know whether that was a real number. Um, not known at that point in time. What we were learning subsequent to this is that that number does include both water and sewer costs, and so it should be at the top of the line. I'm now confused because we've gotten another communication from John that actually gives a different number here, and that might be because we know the final, um, the final rate study report is supposedly in hand. I don't know if anybody's gotten it yet. When it it's happened, posted yet. online. It's posted online. Okay, so I have not gotten there to read it. Um, I will do that. Uh, I suggest everybody does it because it's an interest. It'll be an interesting document. So, so man, has the comment for sure for the new HAC folks. So this water rate study it's posted online. Someone needs to really dive into it because this is going to affect us for years to come. What they're they've added this whole new infrastructure cost. Okay, so I'm sure they're doing it right. So, so really, yeah. So the issue here really get is us. that over the 23 year history of the Glen, no reserves were ever maintained for infrastructure. So the things that are below ground in the Glen have never had a reserve. 
and therefore no money's been put away to repair a broken pipe or to replace a whole se section of pipe that begins to collapse. Zero dollars ever put away. Now those dollars would have been billed to the Glen because they were underneath us had that been done. When we did the initial level one reserve study, now what, five, six years ago now, that we asked whether or not we should include anything below ground in our reserve study. The answer we were given at that point in time was an absolute no, that the site authority was going to maintain that as their responsibility because they wanted to be in control of all of the infrastructure and as people can testify as we tried to get information on um, public records requests, they won't even let us have the detail to see whether or not they've made decisions that are safe about the expansion of the neighborhood. So they view that as a security issue, or they did. Well, because of budget constraints and things that are happening on their side of the fence, and we know that the CSU system enrollments are down and budgets are a mess across the whole system at this point. They now need to be able to push costs to us that they didn't intend to. They have the legitimate right to push those costs to us because the ground suddenly says that- I, we should, I, I, I understand, disagree with I you saying that. I understand. You're given a legal opinion and you cannot do right. that. You need to stop. Okay. Okay, so this is not here this is like not. you're the authority and the lawyer right. and our Carolyn, sub lease says that it does. Okay. Carolyn, I'm need, so tired of it. We don't need outburst. Please let her finish. All right, so I am not no. making a legal statement here. You're getting a judgment from my experience in spending five years with the state. So where we sit now is this is an open issue and when Tom says, pay attention to this, because what the water rate study has done is use a totally different methodology to put in place the dollars necessary to maintain this infrastructure. The method that they're using does not reserve for individual infrastructure items. It looks instead at maintaining 90 days of operating costs as the reserve amount. Now, that's not, not necessarily going to have enough money put away at the point in time when something major breaks. Now, I'm old. I'll be dead by major breaks, but lots of you are told, and you might well want to still be living here at that point. So this is an open issue that I think folks need to be concerned about. So Jake has requested that the site authority council clarify the definition of infrastructure repair and replacements uh, that are to be paid by the water rate survey, okay, versus us paying for them directly. So we think that maybe the definition, he thinks that maybe the definition is six inches below ground, if it's in the top six inches of ground, maybe we're responsible. And if it's below six inches, they're responsible. But we don't have a clear answer to that. So we've had a long conversation about the DG path maintenance here. I would skip that part of the report. Who can throw those a six inch? Um, I guess maybe I don't know where the six inch comes from. And Jake has left the room. Is that a norm? I don't know. I can't. I can't answer that question. I'm telling you what Jake. I'm telling you what Jake has asked for. Jake has asked for a determination of whether that's a good criteria to use to determine when we're responsible. Jake. I know who's Jake. I haven't signed it on my ground subways with him. Oh. Would you please let Mrs. Boyd give her I'm report? Saying, I'm just saying. But she, 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 Would you please let yeah, Mrs. Boyd give her report? Legal opinion. 
No, I am not giving legal opinions. I am not a lawyer. So let me continue. Um, the meeting continued uh, looking at the pie charts uh, that Jake has prepared. We can all see in the email that she has sent out to everybody. Uh, we discussed the possibilities for bag structure changes. That was a very inclusive conversation. Um, included things like membership, election status, a voting process, and bag meetings, running the bag as an independent group, such that there would be an HAC, a CAG, and a bag, separate advisory entities. Uh, I don't know when this will get resolved. It will clearly be on you guys' plate to have input to that. In preparation for this meeting, facilities was asked to provide historical water usage data and provide an allocation of the table that was not available before the budget was submitted. Tom found inconsistencies in that data. They quickly made corrections. Facilities has indicated that these errors resulted in an undercharge to University Glen in the 21-22 physical year to the tune of $22,564, which they wish to retroactively charge the Glen. Timing is unclear. This was the argument that began the meeting. Uh, we vehemently argued that this was not acceptable. We brought up the $290,000 recovery request that we have been making now for several years. The discussion then became muddled with no res resolution declared. We believe the site authority will force the recovery of the $22,564 amount on their own. My take on this if they do this retroactive charge for prior year expenses, we should accept John's logic during this meeting, which by the way said we couldn't make retroactive charges and pursue the return of the $290,000 overcharge for cameras or reclaimed water infrastructure that we as a neighborhood paid over 15 years. Note, these issues are all ongoing. Now I've attached to this something that I think is very important to us. And that is if the last site authority board, my letter to the site authority board focused on a policy for managing our reserve fund investments. And I have now provided a letter uh, that I would appreciate the support of this current HAC and potentially the same conversation in the HAC for the August board meeting um, that says the following. This letter is a request that you adopt at your August meeting an addendum to the site authority investment policy that applies solely to university. The investment policy that you adopted at your main meeting is appropriate for site authority funds, but not to our neighborhood. The Davis Sterling Law's HOA requirements on the management of reserve funds provides a model for handling our reserve funds. Here is suggested wording of an appropriate reserve fund policy for University Glen. The site authority at all times shall exercise prudent fiscal management in maintaining the integrity of the University Glen Reserve accounts. Funds accepted or received by a managing agent or the site authority must be deposited in accounts that protect the principal and that are covered by insurance provided by an agency of the federal government or a guarantee corporation. In no event may those University Glen reserve funds accepted or received by a managing agent or the site authority be invested in stock or other instruments where the principal is at risk. And Tom and I disagree on this next request and I'm willing if the group wants it to take taken out to take it out. In addition, the site authority shall annually appoint a committee of at least three qualified members of the University Glen community to oversee these investments. 
Currently, our three reserve funds are invested with cattle trust, and the principal of each fund is at risk. The unrealized losses in these funds negate our income's contributions to reserves done after the completion of our level one study in 2019. In addition, use of these funds incurs management costs, which likely further erode the value of the funds, including paying out BlackRock for part of this, and they're kind of one of the most expensive of these kinds of companies on Wall Street. The members of the 2223 HAC supporting this letter, letter believe the fault that following the state requirements for neighborhoods similar to ours, not based placing our principal at risk and requiring that these funds be insured is the only prudent and ethical way to manage our chronically underfunded reserve assets. Please adopt the addendum to your investment policy, which requires compliance with these principles. Thank you for your action on this important protection of our reserve funds. I think this is the bare minimum to try to get us to a level playing field. I kind of agree with Tom. I don't know about three members of the community being in percent. Appointed is what it says, appointed by the site authority. I disagree with that. And where'd you get this wording that's involved? Did you get it from another document? Did you? The wording comes from a a description of a policy that makes sense for a Davis Sterling HOA board. So yes, I got it from another document that was legally vetted uh, and recommended as a from where? Um, I looked on the web and found them, found found it there. So I will check, strike the paragraph on the committee, and <laughs> then I would like people's agreement to this. And without agreement, I will send it independently. But I would prefer that we speak with one voice if possible. So I can't make a decision just sitting here, can't be handed a letter without you just gave it to me tonight, right? I did. I I'm not willing to I can't vote on that without doing some independent research. I don't know if that's right or wrong what you're asking. May I make a suggestion? Since we're holding the minutes until Monday. Can we hold this until Monday as well? Certainly, and have everybody weigh in by Monday. Excellent. I'll make a determination and resolve it at the beginning of next week. May I speak? I have what I have because I talked to professionals. So I wouldn't consider saying yes to this without somebody with more experience looking it over, and that can't happen by the day. Who, who would you be sending this to? I'm not entitled to personal life. Tom, can you see no, I, on the, no, I, I you yeah. asked me who I would be sending it to. Okay. Yeah. As I said, I have the right to a personal life. Okay. I, yeah. I mean, you're asking for the site authority to write a policy that affects our reserves, and you're asking us, you're trying to write the wording yeah. for that. And I think that's so something the, that a layman shouldn't do. So, number the point, one, the point that we're trying to make is that the commonly accepted business practice for managing reserve funds in an HOA setting is that the Principle should never be put yes, I, I think people understand that. I don't disagree so with policy, that. I don't disagree with does. that. But what I'm saying is I disagree with you. You have put words in bold and you said this is the policy we want you to adopt. Mm -hmm. well, and so I need said, more time. So I've said take some time. Get back. Let's resolve. Yep. Thank you. Okay. 
um, keeping in mind that our um, our charge ends Friday of next week, so we really would need something back by Wednesday. Well, I have an easy, easier access than Toby does to There's, this kind of stuff. May, <laughs> may, I can make a suggestion. There's a um, well accepted publication that's issued every year on how to manage HOAs. And I think you have a copy of it now. Yep. And I think it probably has this text in it. It talks about how to run an HOA under David Sterling, goes through all the David Sterling stuff. So, um, Hold I that. have one of those. Okay, go through it. So they're not a jury, Tom. Saying that. No, no, that's okay. Yeah, no, no, no. We all. I, I, I get, I get all that. What Tom is saying. I'm just saying, mimic an HOA. Right. Mimic David Sterling. That's all we're saying. In other words, we're not an HOA. We all agree. Much stricter requirements than we are. Just pull the text out of there. With respect to. The use of our my question is not that. My question is they are not legal. They cannot say anything about those policies. <clears throat> they just have to tell us what's going on, where did they refer, and the question was very simple for me. Uh, where did you get this data? Where did okay. you get this data? Um, okay. Um, okay. Um, it's um, from okay. commonly accepted practice in this space. Just share it with that. Let them know. You got one just like normally that. if it if you are site it's never mind. I'm going to talk about it. We'll, we'll talk about it later. Oh, we'll look at it later. I have Anything else? All right. Oh, we need the rest of the agenda. Okay. Um okay. Committee report. Um Mr. Wheeler as the social committee had any members or any activity in the last month. The social committee would like to report. That on June 23rd, 24th, and 25th, there will be a Greek festival at Camarillo Airport Park. This is something that the neighborhood has supported in the past. And this is something that incurs no cost to the CAM budget or the social committee budget. We're just letting you know that it's happening. It's at a little different time than usual, but this. 23rd, 24th, 25th Greek Festival. The next item is July 4th. We will be once again having the July 4th Parade. The July 4th Parade will start at Town Center and go up Anacapa to the park. Everyone is requested to do what they can to wear the colors red, white, and blue. You can, uh, you can decorate your bicycles, you can decorate your wagons, you can decorate your dog. Uh, this will be at 10 a.m. on July 4th. And there is no cost incurred to the CAM budget for this event. Yes, ma'am. Uh, send out an email because there's so, I'm not sure I understand this, but I'm going to turn it to us. They haven't said anything about it, so. Um, do the homeowner, yeah, if, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we can send an e blast. I think maybe that's if we can do an e blast for that, in the mailbox thing, I'm going to agree. I go every year, kind of because I know Greek. the police generally escort everyone so no one is harmed. Yes, that's right. Uh, right. Okay, great, thank you. And then the last uh, future plan is for July the 29th uh, will be a semi-annual neighborhood garage sale. Uh, flyers for that have been out on social media. That's probably something we should inform the CAM office of as well. We can just put out the July events. Okay, great. That's it for the social committee. Okay, landscape. 
Landscape Committee. Uh, basically, Jake went over everything that we've dealt with, uh, the blowers, the incredible weeds and clover at the park. Uh, those things have all been addressed by Jake earlier in the evening. Okay. All right. uh, why is Jake not giving the report every morning? Everyone can ask for three months. What report? What report? Work orders. Ask him. Uh, like landscaping. He used to say work orders. And he used to say there were 31 yeah. work orders, six were for plumbing. I um, work for irrigation. We can request that Jake include the work order report because we have failed it by not asking. I wanted it for the past six months. Okay, well, that's a public records request you could make. If they they UG can't work order, not a CSK. Which one? You could ask Jake for that. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, sure. All right. We please go through the agenda. Okay. Is is the landscape committee report complete? What Jake gave was accurate. Okay. Uh, dog park has. I, I'm told the dog committee has nothing. Do you have something? The dog committee has nothing new to report. Okay. Everything is balanced at this time. Okay. And um, Gabrielle had had. Planned to be here and then was called away at the last minute. Carolyn, do you know anything about? I know you are now taking over the garden committee, and um, thank you for doing that. We, she's not here to hear it. But thank Gabrielle for her um, dedicated service. Is there anything else to report about the status? Um, I'm trying to take over. I have been elected by the garden committee to be the chair. But Gabrielle and I haven't been able to get together. So she still has all the records and I have nothing. So okay. I'm working on it. She's out of town. Right. Unavailable. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything important that happened in the CAG today that we didn't talk about tonight. I just have a couple of things. Next week, I believe on the 29th, the library is hosting an event and they specifically, and this is a first, they specifically have invited the residents of University Glen. I believe it's gonna be from four to six at the courtyard over by the library. They promised there's gonna be a little wine and we're gonna to get to hear about the research and who doesn't love wine. So- well, Is uh, that a work day from four to six? It's on a Thursday. <laughs> from four okay. to six. I think it's actually from it's four not, to later. Is it? Well, it's officially yeah, been posted until six. That. Yeah, pardon me. Yeah. No, because the CAG meeting was today. Okay. So we hope many people will come. I mean, this is, is a result of, of lots of Mary's work to try to get a partnership with the university. Um, and and more of a relationship between the Glen and university, university staff. And this yeah. is the first big thing that's come of that. Right. And the more we show up, you know, my theory is we would like to be thought of by the university as something other than a funding source that complains a lot. And so if we can show up and support the campus, we hope that that will inure to our own benefit. So think of it as a matter of like self interest. Um, does anybody have any additional topics? Okay. Um, I, I have a very quick one yeah. since he was here. Angel, could someone reach out to Angel yes. and ask? We tried this a couple years ago, and as okay. far as I know, it went nowhere. Ask them to research where our property taxes are going. <laughs> I still don't understand. <laughs> I believe I do. Well, be let's, yeah, okay, let's, but I don't want to talk about that again. We've had that. But let, let, let's ask him. Years. We tried it, tried it, tried yeah. it. I can tell you exactly where 100% of your property tax goes. Yeah, yeah the county tax collector. No, 100% <laughs> of the property taxes, your, your Prop 13 property tax dollars pay for a portion of the debt service on the 
currently I got that. continuing I, existing. I understand that, but what about the other part? Bomb. But what about the other part? I, I think Tom makes a good point because we were kind of popcorn machined around a couple of years ago when we asked about it and then we got no supervisor answer. parks retired and so on. It may, might be nice to have a new opinion it's, and just see how it comes out. It's not a matter of opinion. It's okay. a matter of where the checks go and where the money is spent. So that's why we could ask Angel. But it's, are, are, you know, are we paying for the fire department service? No. Because none of our property, the only dollars on your tax bill that go that go to a specific place are the line items that identify that but, location. So do you have to I, I motion that I motion that we write the supervisor's office and have Angel look into it. Information request to Ventura County. So you have and, it in writing. And I do have an email. But there's they they, they have one big bucket called something, and that gathers. And they don't tell you what's in it. Oh, I'd like and to see it in writing. If you that, that, that big bucket, that is the money that comes to me. I motion we contact oh. Angel through the supervisor's office to answer the question. I'll be happy to do that. Excellent. Okay, to somebody I second a motion. Oh, I second his motion. Do we have any property improvement requests? Yes. yes. Okay. 